Are you overwhelmed, a little frustrated, maybe even intimidated by the International Building Code? It's Daniel Laxons with Roofing Business Builder. A lot of uh, feedback I have received just recently. People are saying, can you do more technical videos? And so this is the beginning. I am answering your call for more technical videos and especially talking about the International Building Code. If you haven't done so already, hit subscribe and hit the bell so that way you're gonna be notified. But let's get into it. We're gonna talk a little bit about these walls on the roof well what this is a wall you know so I know most of you roofers out there know that this is called a parapet wall but you never know if you own a building and you're watching this video uh, in roofing we call these parapets now think about this though you may have heard of division 7 that's a CSI division 7 is CSI which is whenever you're looking at a specification what that was designed by uh, an architect and engineers they go by division 7 but when it comes to International Building Code, we're actually dealing with Chapter 15. So that means that if you're grabbing a spec book, you can flip through to the seventh division, boom, you find waterproofing. And then when it comes to International Building Code, if you wanna look that up, you have to go to Chapter 15 in the code. And so uh, when we're looking at a parapet wall to properly cope this wall, it says here in section 15, uh, 03.3 that parapet walls shall be properly coped with a non-combustible weatherproof material of a width no less than the thickness of the parapet wall well if you try to put a metal coping cap and it's too small it's not gonna fit anyways so that's redundant but uh, the point is is that you have to properly cope a wall and let me go into why that was if you notice that we're on a built-up roof here and of course they're uh, they have a receiver here but this is this is the flashing this is the flashing here on the wall the wall is also then coated so this is sealed from the elements uh, and then up here you have to have a coping cap and when you think of um, built up the reason why now built up has been around for a long time and it's also considered a single ply uh, then you have another ply so if you're doing a three ply built up or modified cap sheet these are all plies so that's why you hear the term single ply and then we with recent technology we came out with uh, PVC was uh, created first in Germany and then later on we came out with TPOs and so here's the thing though is uh, when it came to built up roof it can't turn 90 degrees as a matter of fact this should have had a cant it should have had a cant uh, a cant strip is that little triangular piece that goes in here because built up can turn a, a 45 degree angle but it's very difficult to turn a 90 degree angle without cracking so what had happened is the, the they'd normally run the built up up to the cap but if they try to turn this, it would crack through here. So then they came up with the idea of using a coping cap. And that's a metal cap. And But now with the new technologies of PVC, TPOs, they can turn a 90 degree angle without cracking. And so the newest technology they're coming out with is edge details that look like a coping cap from the ground. If you're looking up at that building, it looks like there's a coping cap on there. So we get the same style, that same design, uh, but the, the, the waterproofing is the actual membrane on the top. But you can do this either way. You can go ahead and still put the coping cap, but it's not necessary if you're using thermoplastic single plies such as TPO or PVC. And so a coping cap is an edge detail. Remember, here's an edge here, there's an edge over there, but it is an edge detail. So when we're looking at International Building Code, Chapter 15, Waterproofing, uh, we find at 1504.5, the edge securement for low slope roofs. Uh, it says that the low slope built up modified bit and single ply roof system metal edge securements uh, except gutters shall be designed and installed for wind loads in accordance with chapter 16 and tested for resistance in accordance with test methods such as re1 re2 re3 and the latest one ANSI spry es1 that's the one i want you to think about ANSI spry es1 that means um, edge system one and the reason why they came up with this is because the hurricanes that were coming through Florida, uh, FM, looked and saw, well, what in the world? How is this? Um, how is it that these roofs blew off and these other roofs didn't blow off? You know, how is this happening? 
And what they found is that they were spending a lot of insurance money to, to pay for the whole roof when the, re the reason why the roof failed was because of the securement at the edge was not done properly. And so ES1 uh, is a very important one to remember. If you're roofing, you wanna make sure that you have ES1 compliant coping caps and edge metal. And the reason why is because the wind blows, you know, I'll tell you a story. Let me tell you what happened to our company here in Texas. As you know, I used to be a manufacturer's representative for several different manufacturers for components and building roofing systems. And so I designed um, six different roofing systems or six different roofs for uh, an architect and a school system. And what had happened is that a hurricane came through and out of all six of these roofs only one of them had a problem the wind got underneath the coping cap and then it blew off and of course fortunately the the peel stop is where we screw down within a uh, 16 to 32 inches we uh, enhanced we put more screws in that area so when it blew off it stopped right there the peel stop worked but here's the thing is, why did that coping cap come off? Well, what we found is that the roofer did not follow the spec. The spec required that they use the, uh, the coping that was uh, from the manufacturer. The manufacturer is ES1 compliant. And so, it, by the way, guys, if you wanna save yourself some time and money, um, I know a lot of you all have your own bending machines, but the truth is, is you're taking that liability upon yourself. And plus your customer, you wanna keep this customer for a long time. So if something happens where that coping cap comes off, that ruins your reputation. It may ruin your relationship with a big cash cow that you found and had that relationship with. So it might be better and you don't have to worry about stocking. You don't have to buy you know, uh, bending and folding machines you can, but the point is, is it's better to put that liability on the manufacturer. But the reason why it came off is because that contractor bent their own metal and they didn't comply with the International Building Code's attachment uh, code. So that's it for parapets, coping caps, and edge detail. And if this seems a little overwhelming, trying to understand the International Building Code, then please subscribe to the Roofing Business Builder channel that you're watching right now and hit that bell because then you'll be notified when I come out with more videos just like this one on the International Building Code. And if you're one of those roofers that's trying to cross over into a commercial roofing, or if you're in a commercial roofing, but you hit that little point, you hit the million dollar mark, but you can't get past it, or the four million dollar mark and you can't get past it, then schedule a strategy call with me and we'll see if the Roofing Business Builder program is not a good fit for you. But until then, I'll see you on the rooftop. Nice.